What's going on, guys? And for the win here, we are back with our franchise mode as the Winnipeg Jets here. And uh, look at Detroit keep getting pushed back to fourth overall. I can't believe they're still trash, though. Still coming in like last place every year. Sucks to be them. But they got a couple picks up there in that top ten. Anyway, we're not up there in the lottery with either of our picks. Florida made the playoffs. We obviously made it to the conference finals. So we're going to have a couple later firsts. It's not too bad. I mean, what what, what were we going to hope for? <laughs> Maybe get lucky with Florida. That wasn't the case. Alrighty. Um, don't need to view that here. Let's check retirements because there probably will be some more who actually start standing out. There's Kovalchuk. Uh, Dano Chara finally retires at age 45. Little. Oh, he's gone already, huh? Well, at least I got out of that contract. <laughs> um, Bobby Ryan. Louis Erickson, Kessler, Felpula, Jokin, and Bacchus. All these bad contracts. Bufflin retired. Okay, Seabrook as well. Those are most of the main ones. And there's definitely some names, but... Now, okay. Craig Anderson is the only one to... Oh yeah, he was definitely done. Decent save percentage, not a great goals against. Goes to show you what kind of teams he played on. And that is about it for the retirements as I silence my phone notifications once again. No distractions. Dan Hamuse becomes a coach. <laughs> yeah. Everyone wants to be coached by Dan Hamuse. Uh, Kessler and Beagle become scouts. All right. Let's see. Um, no Manitoba. And what the hell is their name? Oh, yeah, Winnipeg. <laughs> uh, take a second. No Winnipeg. All right, so none of our coaches retire. That's great. Let's check out the draft class here. Maybe do some interviews and stuff. All right, so. Ooh. Oh, wait, never mind. Damn. I uh, Yeah, <laughs> it's the 10th. I was like, wait, I saw the 17th and I saw Elite. I got really excited that we can maybe grab an Elite. Well, I mean, we could still possibly trade somewhere here, either for Manuel Gotch or Savoie, but, I mean, it's a playmaker. He's weak on faceoff, so he is a technically, you know, winger. He's NHL ready. Holy hell. But, you know, we're uh, short on the shooters. Okay, well, interview-wise, we do have a couple low elites, one in the second, then an, ooh, a lefty. This guy's at least a lefty, so I'll probably grab him, even though he's not, yeah. I'll grab him anyway, because they're low elites. He's way back there, so it's worth whatever pick this is, for real, but other than that, not a whole lot. This guy, though, I might pin him, because he's actually right in the midst to be uh, low elite here. This guy, not so much. He's looking more like low top six. But that guy could definitely be an elite where he's projected. That's in the second round. This guy, more of into, into the third. That's less of a chance. Here's another one that you want to pin. And maybe even that guy, but he's more out of... Yeah, those are the guys I'm pinning right there. Anyone here out of the ordinary? 56. Maybe a pin him, but he's around where the, you know, the elites are. But this guy is a sniper, although he is 19. Also injury prone with weak... <laughs> no. That's that's a no. Other than that, pretty much it. 38. Gem. Three. It's not amazing. Yeah. Uh, so we probably don't take him over. Yeah, probably don't take him over anyone. Okay, well, that's that. I think that's pretty much it. Now, I, I, was, I was going here, basically. I wanted to see if I wanted to uh, interview anyone. Let's see if we can find any unknowns or something like that in places where we'll have some picks. We might not find any like that, which is, you know, understandable. If we don't, and if, well, there's a couple here. You know what? Yes, I will interview both of these guys because they're well within range to be uh, low elites here. So, that those are two good interviews to do. Other than that, I probably won't interview anyone else because... Again, these aren't super, super useful. A few, so three or ETN. That's good. That lines up with the other uh, low elites in there. So two-way guy. 
And we'll see what his personality's like. Two clicks. There we are. A leader. I like that. That's always good to have. You need, you need leaders. You need guys to step up in that locker room. Not too bad. Come on. Be that low. Damn. Medium for him. How about this guy? Let us see what this guy's all about. ETA. Three years, so still within range, but... All right, so DFD that guy. And how about your personality? Uh, consummate professional. So that's good. All right, please help. Go, go low. Go low for me, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on! Oh, okay. So probably not. Neither of those guys likely to be low elites. I do have one more interview to use. I don't even know if I'm going to use it. What? Alright, he's got to be like top 9 or something. I guess he was scattered a long time ago. Hmm. High top 6? Yeah, most likely. Unless he's like... No, he's got to be high top 6. No way he's anything else. I could go for that guy, but like I said, we're probably not going to be able to trade up that far. Or maybe it's worth knowing at least what kind of player type he is, just in case he is available. I mean, he should be elite, right? Pretty much. I guess I'll... Inter well, like, what else am I going to use the interview on? <laughs> Alrighty. Um, let's see his ETA. Alright, one year ETA. All right, it's Sniper by the looks of it. So that's kind of, um, yeah, I'm actually glad. In case there is somehow a pick that we can get up there. We do need shooters. Oh, man, that's good. He wants to win at all costs as well. He's a passionate dude. He's a shooter. And he's right on the cusp of being into the NHL. And he's a left wing. Not that that really. Oh. I look Okay, so high top six. Uh, that's not bad, though. I mean, good old second line shooter. Yeah, not bad. All right, so it'll be a high top six, second line shooter type dude. He'll probably go earlier, which he might push someone else back, but he he's not going to push back this camel guy, I don't think. Yeah. The guy you want from this, obviously, is Cody Smith, but we ain't, we didn't, <laughs> we ain't getting that pick. <sighs> or maybe Mike D. Oh. <laughs> You're similar to Milan Lucic. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Mike D. Career over. Career over before it even starts. Bust. <laughs> all right, anyway. So there we go for all the interviews there. We pinned some guys that we want to take a look at. Before the draft, Vancouver did go on to win the cup, so they didn't lose in Game 7 somehow. They're, they must have not been a Game 7, because they're... They, they swept Philly! <laughs> I guess they just flipped the switch and dominated, so Philly got absolutely crushed. Philly, wow, they yeah, they won in 6, won in 7, then won in 7 again. So Philly scraped in in Vancouver after they win in 7 against us, after winning in 5 two previous times. At least we gave them the biggest fight they had. Like, we got to take that. Like, we were technically the second best team in the NHL. Philly doesn't count. Philly had a hard-ass road to get there. They they, they sucked. We we did we did pretty good. Like, we, uh, we have, I felt like we maybe had to play the better. I don't know. I'm trying to find any excuse for what happened last year. <laughs> There's no excuse for the offense disappearing. Ugh. All right, well, that's that. Let's uh, check out the awards here, which is what I went here anyway to do. There you go, Vancouver. Two years in a row, Canadian teams won the Cup. Presidents went to Tampa. Individual awards, Stam Coast with the Art Ross and the Hart. Klingberg with the North, so they did. Was Klingberg the one I thought they were going to give it to? I think so. Uh, Lady Bing to Kane. Yeah, 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 Holtz. Plays good everywhere else. Con Smythe to Patterson. <laughs> Koskinen with the uh, William M. Jennings. Oh, and then Vasilevsky and Aaron Dell split the William M. Jennings. You're damn right. Aaron Dell's worth the first, kids. Remember that this year as the trade deadline approaches. Bill Masterton to Nurse. Jack Adams to, yeah, right, to Vegas' coach. Bergeron got the Selkie. Yeah, he did. 
Uh, Stamkos, Ted Lindsay, and Maurice Richard de Kucherov. All right. So there you go. A lot of lightning up there. They didn't win anything else. Typical year for the lightning. All righty. So that's that. And now we are ready for the draft. I did turn on the draft settings. Now I'm second guessing. I'm almost 100% I did. But I just second guessed myself, so I got to check. And you guys have to check with me. So enjoy the five seconds of wasted time. There you go. All right, so we're ready to go here in this draft. Let's see if we can maybe trade up for one of those elites with our two firsts here, or will we have to draft some other stuff with it? No big deal. We can always trade a couple of, I think we have a couple thirds that we can move up for one of those other seconds. We got good options here to move up. We shall see what happens. Why well, should disappoint? Okay, good. At least at least the first round, first overall wasn't on the block again to really disappoint me. Anytime it's a franchise, I usually don't trade up for the first overall, even if it's on the block. Well, we can trade up into the top ten, the eight or the nine spot. So there is a possibility, and I'm you know it's not the top five. I'm not opposed to moving up into there. Question is, is that something we want to do? Eight or nine spot? There's still Gotch. There's still Savoy. Gotch is, uh, I uh, kind of wish I maybe checked out what his play style was. Puck protection, offensive creativity, playmaking ability. Similar to Joe Thornton. Maybe he's like a playmaker. Hard to say. Very hard. Ooh, he only played against B competition. He didn't score too much. But he is NHL ready, so interesting. Ooh, you know what? He, he balance, balance, balance. That's actually really good for our scheme fit. Carry dump, because that our coach loves balance. So this guy would be really, really good for our scheme fit for the most part. Because he likes the balance stuff, right? He, he's actually, he, we can kind of plug him in anywhere. Uh, that's pretty good. Right winger. Um, We got Ehlers and Liney on the right wing side. So, again, we don't really need the guy. I'd still kind of prefer this guy, but I doubt he'll still be there. Again, we, we want the shooters. I don't know if this guy will shoot, but... Slavkovsky is a guy who will shoot more. Because, well, number one, I'm pretty sure he's created. And number two, he's a sniper. So it makes a lot of sense that he'd shoot a lot. Oh, man. Decisions, decisions. And these are decisions we're going to have to make before I check out some of the growth. Because I don't know if we're going to get a pick up there. You basically don't want to pause on my first pick. So the eight or nine pick, man. That's what we're after. Our two picks coming in at 25 and 28. So package them two together. Could probably get the, the eight by itself. We might have to throw in another sort of prospect if we so choose. But the question is, do we want to move up for it? Is it worth it? So let's peruse around what we have. Because, I mean, we're still considering perhaps trading one of these guys. You know, Veseline and Byfield. Something for, you know, a defenseman. Top two to type dude. We're getting to that point. Kyle Connor is kind of exactly where I want him. 87, 25, really solid. That's the line. It might actually turn out to be exactly like Kyle Connor. Not much of a shooter. He did play third line, though. Bear that in mind. Kyle Connor played second line with power play time. Not a big shooter either, you know? All right, so, Cody, you're in Nashville. Let me just write that down right now. Or actually, I don't need to. I can go back and write that down so I don't confuse myself looking at the uh, things. But there you are, 82 franchise power forward. So you obviously grew because that's what the prospects do. Um, even though you guys all start at 70 overall, you guys grow. So you guys are all still kind of even where you're at. Just some of you might be younger. And there you go. Cody Smith grew up to an 82. You are NHL ready. Power forward. You did not score probably as much as you should have. <laughs> but look at how you're built. Good shot. Good offensive awareness. Good. Oh, God, that defense is filthy. And you're not a good skater because that's the way he wanted to be built. Your deking's up, is up to an 84, which, again, you didn't want that to be too good. It's I don't know if that's too good for your liking, but... I tried to build you as uh, as you won, and I think I succeeded pretty well, especially with that skate. I don't think your skating grew at all. Like, legit. I think it just literally stayed where it was. <laughs> oh, there you are. 
So look, we got someone else on the Predators. Looks like someone else will be going to the Anaheim Ducks as well. So a lot of you members are actually on the same team. I'm kind of digging that. A lot of you guys are playing together. It's pretty good. I mean, it's bad because those teams continue to be shit. But hey, once you draft heavy, I mean, yeah, you guys should make your way back up. All right, all right. Do I want to trade for this pick? Is it really, really worth it? I'm still... Let me go back. It kicked me off of the thing because I was thinking. Do we want... Still have Liney. Still got Shifley. We got Wong. Tessier might actually be NHL ready now. He's up to a 77. He should get another jump, correct? I believe so. So maybe Tessier actually breaks into the NHL this year. A little bit late on him, but you know what? He was a mid first pick. Still have Landis Gog, who looks like he got some stat growth. So that first line's filth. I mean, yeah, we will eventually need a replacement for him. We're thinking maybe Veselainen will be that. I don't know. I don't know if he will, 85, 23. Still looking like a possible trade asset. So a winger wouldn't be bad to get. Especially on the kind of right wing side, even though, yeah, we have Ehlers, but he's still, did he not erase that stat growth? Or a stat minus? I'm a little concerned about that. Hmm. It really depends on what happens. Like, it really depends on kind of what happens in these picks. I kind of want to see the order of them before I decide. I'll go up to seven, probably. So let's go up here. Yeah, there goes Mike D to Anaheim. Grew up to a 79 as a high elite. So a couple of you guys on Anaheim now. Steen, I will write you guys down so I don't forget, but I'm just, I want to take care of this first part. And this is a pretty damn good. All right, let's see if that high top stay. He probably will. Oh, man, they're, uh, they're getting close. There's Lambert. There's Wright. A lot of playmakers and stuff. Kemmel would have been obviously great to get, but there's no way we would have got that. Detroit with another pick here. They might not grab the sniper now at this point. Question is, am I going to want to trade? Let's check it before I get there. Before I get there and then decide, let's just check the value. If I'll be able to kind of trade for that without too much. They don't want these two picks, but I feel, oh, we don't have a second. Oh, we're only going to be able to get one of those guys. Uh, unless there's someone else I want to give up. I highly doubt it. The value would work, but is there someone else I could give up for this? We don't have any good goalie prospects. Didn't grab any elites. We don't really have... Do we even have spare prospects I would want to even give up for this? Not really. Well, if we are going to get another shooter, this guy would be worth giving up. At least you don't give up. Maybe give up one of these guys, but that's not going to be enough. You would have to give up Marta Kine in here, who's 65 at 18. So you'd have to kind of trade this sniper for another sniper, which I wouldn't mind. The game is going to be further along if it goes through, but this might not be enough value. Eh, it might be. It might only need a bit more to go through. So is it worth it? Maybe. Just might be worth it to go for that. Give, that's a pretty solid prospect. Like, he's looking like he'll become a second liner the way he's growing. So that's, you know, we're giving him a first-round pick. Basically giving him two two picks who could turn out to be second liners for one who's like going to pretty much be guaranteed to be a second liner and who's closer to NHL ready. So, I mean, they're getting a good return if we do this. Let's see if he gets picked right here. He does. Okay, so now I'm kind of less inclined to go for it. Especially as it's likely going to be in a two-way forward type deal. I mean, I could trade for him alone, but they're not going to want to give him up, Detroit. They did get a couple sniper wingers now. That sucks for us. Uh, do I really want to go for this medium elite? Could also go for Irvin Jack, but that's too many OFDs, I think. I'd rather go for someone like Gotch. In that case, I could probably go for the nine. Unless he goes out of order. Might be worth it. I wish I knew his player style. I'm hoping he's not a two-way guy, but he might be. Well, I, I could live with him being a two-way guy. I'm just hoping he's, he's a shooter, which there's no guarantee of. Ah. 
you know what? But Detroit will want my picks. How much are they willing to spend or give up? I don't think they're going to be willing to give up that Slavkovsky guy. I mean, they shouldn't because he's he's pretty freaking solid. But can I make an offer too good for them to refuse? How badly do I want him? We do need shooters. As a, Oh, my God. What the hell? Where is he? Right there. That's more value than the freaking pick was. So we could do a, a, a double move and they can get an elite out of it. I can actually, you know what? I can help Detroit here. I want that guy more than I want the elite. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to... Actually, I can give them the nine. They're going to still get an elite. All right, here we go. This will give me more time. We're going to do a little tricky thing here. And I'm going to give up that prospect. I'm going to keep the 28th, though, because I want to I want to get both of those low elites. So let's see. Let's do... Let's, let's actually help the AI in Detroit. They already have a shooter. They already have Zadina as well. They're good on that front. I'm going to help them. Throw Marta Kynan in. That should get us that pick. The 25 and a top 6 prospect easily. And I can get, actually get back a bit more. Can I get a... They don't have a second. They're not going to want to give up that third. I might take a 4 here. Even though it's quite close to fair value. Alright, so almost there. I'll take a five just as a little bit of extra value. I don't have a five. Give me a six then. There you are. Okay, so we got their pick at nine. And what we want to do here is use that pick to trade for Slavskovsky. Which will... Or we could pick and then trade the prospect for Slavkovsky. Because that might actually have to be what's done here. Which I, of course, would not be... Opposed to at all. We will get an elite with this pick. It's a guarantee. Because the guy himself. And we can actually see what that guy's player type is. Yeah, it's not going to be enough on its own. The elite will. So, all right. Let's, let's kind of do that. All right. Make your pick there. They got Urban Jack. All right. Okay. So, first things first. Now that we're on our pick, we kind of have plan of action here I'm gonna pause for a bit and check around the league at our guys and then write down the names and then get to what we want to do with the trade stuff <laughs> a lot of uh, moving around here but I really I really really want that guy I, and I think it'll be worth trading you know giving him an elite for it and it'll help again it'll help out Detroit as well they're getting something better all right so first up let's check out how ice warrior is developing you're a 79 overall, now at 20, so you should be a full-time NHLer now. Should get a nice little jump. Look, that is some good production. Where was that? Uh, okay, you're still playing for the Oil Kings. So your final season of uh, CHL hockey, 105 points, minus 4. 45 goals, 60 assists. And now you are NHL ready. So you're looking good. Good. Good awareness. Decent shot. Good defense. Not too bad. All right. Looking pretty solid there. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's Dean. Dean is on the Ducks. So they have, like, yeah. You guys now have Mike D. And, oh, man. Look at that. And you're looking like you're ready for NHL this next year as well. Was that HL? Yep, you're in San Diego. 37 points. Wow, San Diego's not too good of a team. Not too sure why you're only putting up that many points as an OFD and taking that many shots, but I uh, guess we'll see. Wow, you had less ice time than last year. Yikes. <laughs> San Diego not respecting. They're not putting respect on your name. That shot is so bad, but it's hilarious. You're like a puck mover. <laughs> your shot just flat out hasn't grown over two years. Not too bad, though. I mean, you're not built too poorly. Not at all. Alrighty. So there you are. We got Tyler Schmidt here, 78. Yeah, it might be an NHL. If you get a nice little jump, you could break into that third line. You're built for it. You're definitely built for getting to that second line. I mean, not the greatest of shots, but you're a playmaker, and you definitely got what it takes. Yep, decent, uh, decent year there in Chicago. 65 points, 75 games played, plus guy. Any playoff experience? Nope. But looking like you'll be an NHLer next year for sure. 
Next up is oh yeah, that's right. Anthony is on the Predators. So now you got you got some company there in Nashville, Anthony. You got Cody Smith with yeah. You're on separate wings, although I don't know if Anthony, you're making it up to that NHL. 77 to 20. Bit of a slower growth, slower growth here in that CHL. That awareness needs to get up, but your shot is powerful. But yeah, that offense awareness needs to get up a bit if you want to uh, produce at the top level. That's for sure. But you did have 101 points in your last season in Quebec. All right. Let's see who's next. Oh, yeah, that's right. Gabriel on the Sharks. The goalie. They, uh, oh, man. <laughs> now it's 73 or 20. I mean, you're st you can still be an effective NHLer starter kind of guy but yeah unfortunately san jose kind of screwed up your development by using it as a backup i apologize for that but that's not on me man yeah two years in a row they used you as a backup but you weren't ready full years you did not have a fun time poor gabriel <laughs> i'm so sorry i mean he like 20 70 something like you're still you could still be a number one goaltender but yeah definitely not going to get up to the elite category at this point that's right, has. You're on the Vegas too, you piece of crap. I should just uh, whatever. All right, so there you are, 78 and 19, looking about ready to break into the NHL, Mr. DFD with your 99 poise, 99 slap shot ac or power, 99 body check. <laughs> Look at your accuracies. Why haven't those grown like at all? That's really weird. That's literally what they started at, like around there. Your your, your wrist shot power and your has grown. But neither of your accuracies have grown. <laughs> well, you better be good at shutdown there, Has. Your defensive awareness is a bit slower going than your other stuff. And I made them all almost even. Your shot blocking was actually lower than everything. You're just you guys are just growing weird. So interesting. We'll see how you uh how you pan out here. Look at those penalty minutes. 61 Pims in Chicago there. Oh, maybe you're the one who took away uh no, 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 that was a different team. What am I talking about? That was San Diego. Yeah, you also didn't make the playoffs. You were minus 10. Boo. Boo, no shutdown. Boo. Boo, Andy, boo. All right. And last but not least here, we got Jacob on the uh, Blue Jackets. Let's see how you've been developing. Uh-oh. Uh oh, I'm on defenseman. <laughs> that would be why. There you are. All right, 76 and 19. So maybe not quite ready for the NHL. But besides your shot, you're actually built better than most of these guys. The shots really aren't growing this time around. Which is kind of, I did kind of lower them a bit more just to prevent all the created people scoring like 500 goals a season. But maybe it's a bit too low. Although you did kind of want to be more of a playmaker this time around. And I for well, I did change it, then I obviously merged the wrong rosters and fixed everything, so you're still a two-way forward. Anyway, you're built well. You're still going to produce some of that offense. Still going to get some of those assists. Although, that's a bit worrisome. Where were you even playing? Where'd they have you? Okay, wow. Fourth line time? Maybe third line without power play? Oof. Maybe Eerie stacked, but uh, maybe that's why your development's a bit slower. But you got time. You're, you'll make that NHL, no problem. Yeah, you're yeah, pretty much second line guaranteed. You should not fail at any place. All right, so there we are. There are the members' growths and whatnot. We're still on our pick here. We will eventually trade that. We could call another timeout. No big deal. So let me just write down. Cody Smith is on the Preds. And Mike D, you are on the Ducks. All right, so you're with Dean there. Cody, you join Anthony in Nashville. Nashville, if you don't turn around at this point, you're hopeless. <laughs> you got a franchise power forward. All right, so now we're going to make the pick, and now we can actually decide. Do we keep the guy or do we really want? I'm going to go for Gosh because that's the guy I'm most interested in. I'm hoping maybe he turns out to be Sniper or something. If he turns out to be Sniper, it's going to be really hard to trade him for that other guy. But we are... Nah, I don't know. But let's take him. Manuel Gotch. Two-way forward. 79 overall. Good God. So hard to want to trade him for this guy. But. <laughs> oh, man. 
We don't have to do it now. So you know what? I'm going to ask your guys' opinion. Should we trade this guy for that guaranteed shooter? We know he's a shooter. We know he's a sniper. He's going to shoot a lot. I kind of want him more than the two-way guy. I really do. Although, look at that awareness. Only at 82. Oh, and his shot isn't even really high up there. Bit unfortunate. I didn't build him like this quite obviously. He just grew like this a bit, I think. Hmm, you know what? The shot isn't that great. We know he's going to take a lot of shots, but will he bury a lot is the question. So, yeah, I'll leave it to you guys. Do we do we still make this trade for that Slavkovsky guy, even though, you know, this guy isn't like a shooter or anything crazy? If he takes a lot of shots, we could change him to a sniper. Like, that's not out of the question. We just don't know. I'm going to sign him. Like, yeah, I'm definitely going to sign him. 79 face-offs. Dude, this guy could be like a center if we need him to. Holy hell. Yeah. Manuel Gotch could be a center. Dude, I just... Look at that. The face-off starts at 70. I, why is this guy not a center? I mean, we don't need him to be a center, but holy hell. Yeesh. All right. Well, still worth grabbing that pick. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave it to you guys, though. Do we still want to move for Slavkovsky and help out Detroit? But also getting a shoot, a guaranteed shooter, or do we just hold on to this guy at this point? All right. Well, anyway, that does it for the first round. I don't think I got anything in that second. I do have the later first. We will want to probably move up for something. Anyway, let's move up to our 28th pick. I will go back and check some stuff. Let's see where we ended up. Another elite way as Savoie was really solid as well. Oh, yeah. Then some uh, high overall top sixes here for sure. Then it drops down. That's kind of a bust of a pick right there. Uh, <laughs> well, not necessarily. Well, actually, no, that's definitely is. I mean, there's less of a guarantee he makes the NHL. Oh, yeah, that's a terrible pick from uh, Pittsburgh. So it drops back down. I did see something pop back up, but you're kind of past that point until there. Wow. The jump up really is late here. With two guys right there. Well, okay, at least the Leafs got some decent defense. That'll help them. All right, here's our next pick. 28th. Now's the time where we probably target the low elites because it's not. This is the time really to do it. Cameron Ferraro, no weaknesses. And I like that he's a goal. He has goal scoring. Oh, two year ETA. That's pretty good. So this is a guy you can maybe make into anything. Yeah. I really like goal scoring, offensive instincts, and balance. He's pretty damn well built. No personality quirks. Two year ETA. He likes crash the net. So looking more like a middle six type guy long term, maybe a solid third liner. Which I would be completely, I would love that. I think now's the time we take him. And then we had one more possibility who might be a low elite, but also might not be. I still feel like it will be worth moving up for him. We can also move this pick back a bit to, you know, really capitalize on some value. But not exactly hugely necessary. This guy's another goal scorer. I still think I prefer the low elite. He's got better ETA and everything. Vikingstad, though. That's such a sick name. Ooh, he has strengths as face-offs. So that's a really good 3C of the future. Ludwig Vike. Oh, my God. What a name. God. Should I go with him and then get the guarantee lowly and pass on the next one? Maybe. Especially as a righty defenseman. We kind of have a few of those. Four year you know, you know, four year ETA. I don't think he's going to be a low elite. Four-year, I don't think so. I really don't know. He should be three-year ETA if he's going to be like that. Four-year ETA, that's like the next bracket down. Hold on. Low elite right here. Nah, I can't tell on that guy. Where is one of the... Okay, here we go. I don't know. Nah, that guy's three-year ETA. Shit. Ah! I don't know. Oh, we got a pick right here. Shoot. Well, let's make a pick. I think I'm going to not... I mean, he might turn out to be a low elite, but... I think it's safer to go for Vikingstad and then the uh, guaranteed 
slowly. And I, the reason I really like this guy is because he's still got good offensive instincts. It looks like he'll have really solid face-offs. That's kind of what I'm interested in him for, is those face-offs. Like, I, a really good 3C who takes good face-offs? I mean, that's hard to come by. I'm going to take him. I'm going to take him. Let's grab him. Ludwig, he's a fucking playmaker. Really? Whatever. He can still be a 3C as a playmaker. He'll have really good face-offs. Let's see how he's built. Well, okay. It said good face. It's only a 70. I mean, I guess he can grow a lot. It's not built horribly at all. And, I mean, he did jump up from that. Oh, yeah. That's a really good pick compared to him. Compared to the other, like, top nines and shit we'll probably see here. Oh, yeah. Nah, still, still a good pick there <laughs> in that location. So, yeah, I'm, I'm still okay with that. Now I want to move up for the other dude who's, like, at 43 or something, right? Oh, what are you doing? Ugh. So we can go for around, like, here. That nine pick. 40th. That's safe. Why is Barry's trade value maxed out? Cool. I ain't, I ain't complaining. I'm just kind of wondering. All right, we can go for that. Maybe go for one earlier just to be safe. 39th is a bit safer to grab. So we can plug in a couple of the threes here to snag them. That should go through. Nope. Damn, quite far off, they say. Yikes. I don't think I'm that far off, bud. But all right, let's see if you want a goalie prospect. You don't, but I'm giving you one anyway. Will you like the backup? Will that be enough? Will it say anything? Quite far off still. I don't know. We actually might not be able to get this pick. Might have to move back a bit. Let's put in the fringe starter. Wow. They're really... Who's the other one? New York Rangers, I'm pretty sure. Why'd I go this way? Now they want both of those picks. This is them, right? Let me just check. Oh, well, they have the 33rd and the 40th. Let's put in the 40th. Also on the block. That should that should get it just the blocks alone, right? What? Huh. That doesn't look off to me, but all right. Guess it is. Whoa. Which one did I... Yeah, that's the wrong guy. I put in Burden. There we go. Okay. So, with the fringe starter in there, it went through. Not a big deal. Kind of weirded out by why the other one wasn't just that easy to make go through. All right, he didn't go, so we're good. Some good top fours. Well, look at that guy. I know, 73, top four, 18. Good pick right there for the Isles. All right, and now we're on our pick here, which we will snag Ferraro. Who's yet another center, but he didn't have like strong, strong face-offs. What I liked about him was obviously the goal-scoring offensive instincts. And two-year ETA is pretty damn good for a low elite here at 17 years old. Pretty much a no-brainer to pick this guy. You don't you you gotta move up for him. 68 overall. Yep, that's a solid pick right there. Cameron Ferraro. Built evenly, actually good face-offs as well. So whatever. More guys who could take face-offs gives me more options. Yeah, I'm I'm well happy with that possession i think will play a big key in the, in our in our gameplay because we have you know we have the physical lineup i want to be very puck protection heavy we roll four lines crank that energy level up we can outwork them except in games five six and seven of the conference finals <clears throat> oh man all right well made that pick and that will pretty much do it we did have a couple more pins i think Yes. These ones I won't be able to get really at this point because I already made trades. This guy we can get easily. So let's just move up to our next pick, which is at 120. Well, yeah, he'll be. Uh, this guy's essentially our next pick. Hello, Hardikainen, elite goaltender to Nashville. See, okay, he's 19. So if he was 18, that'd be even scarier. But still, not bad. 58 and 19. That's still kind of within growth range. Not for goalies, more like more or less. Yeah. What a steal right there for them. All right, might, and this might be the time to go for a random goalie at some point in this draft, but here is when we have to pretty much go for our pin, I believe. 133, I don't think we have. We do have another 
Nope, not not ready though. We did grab another pick, but I think it's later. So yeah, let's go for that guy. Let's go for uh, another OFD, but on the left hand side this time. Still, still a solid pick. We'll see how we. Yeah, this is, a, this is a, he's a project. No, no, no matter what way you look at it, it's a project, but it's still good value. Oh my God, forty six overall. Uh, <laughs> not exactly what you're after there. Definitely not what you're after. Yikes. Oh man, he's even built poorly. Whatever. Maybe he'll grow a bunch. All right. Oh, well, there's a couple backup goalies who went, so maybe we missed out on the. Uh, there's three backups who went. There's another low elite, another center. Two way forward guy. Oh, a high starter. Not bad. Well, let's check out where the goalies are. Let's see if I can maybe find some sort of guy of the order. I mean, that guy's probably going to be a backup. Let's be real. Let me go by potentials first. Well, not a whole lot of help there. Oh, no, zero help whatsoever. Like, this guy could jump up to a starter, but that's not enough of a jump up to take the, you know, to risk it being a backup, in my opinion. He's 19. I mean, he could be a starter because he's 19. These guys all have, should have, like, four-year ETA, though, right? 57. 57. That looks like four-year ETA. This guy had five-year ETA and was 19. I mean, he could be a starter. It's a bit more value. Could also be an elite out of nowhere. I don't think that'll be the case, but I'm actually tempted. I mean, we could be wrong. Like, this isn't always accurate, right? It's not always like, oh, one tick is like, oh, especially with how long ago. You know what? This guy could go anywhere. I'm going to pick him because there's nothing else good around here besides maybe this top nine guy who's 20 and five-year ETA. So why go for that when you could take a risk and maybe have it pay off? I'm going to do that. We're going to go for Michael Hedman here and hope that he's a medium elite out of nowhere, which is going to be... No. He's a fringe star, so it's not horrible. But, yeah, obviously you wanted a bit more. But he could be flipped later on down the road. To the 164 we go. Low top six. All right. Low top four. Not bad. Eight, 17 as well. So, he's you know, he's got some, got some room to grow. Could be a top six in the future if we even hold on to him, which we might not. We might end up flipping him. But what the hell else is there? Not a whole lot. That's kind of... <laughs> I'm actually just probably going to go for that. Because, yeesh. Not a whole lot here. Yeah, why not? At least he's 17. Yeah, this is kind of the best best thing you can get here. Radical lock. There you are. 49, low, top, four. D. That guy's 20, that's why. Alright, up we go. Bunch of AHLs, some bottom sixes and sevens in here. Not finding anything out of the ordinary. Yeah, still a lot of, yeah, tons and tons of AHL type guys here. Anything? So that Camilleri guy, you could take a gamble on. I don't know how many how many picks do I have left? This is like my second to last pick or last pick. This is my last pick. Okay. So now's the time to kind of take a gamble on someone. Probably there's nothing here really. I can go for someone who's like unknown, but the odds of that becoming something is pretty, pretty low. Yeah, zero report on this guy. All right, I'm just going to scroll through here and see if something kind of jumps out. Not really. Yeah, not really. There's zero chance either of these guys are going to be... Well... Oh, he's 20. Yeah, there's no way that guy's anything. I 
It's got it recently. Okay, well, Larry should have been scouted recently. Not as recently. Hmm. Both with five year ETA. I don't know. I'm just going to take a random on this one. Maybe get lucky. Probably not. Nah. Low top nine. All right. So that will do it. It's not bad for that. I mean, it's still more value than like an AHL dude or something. So it's still okay, but yeah. All right, that'll do it for the draft. Nothing out of the ordinary in the tail end there. So we got medium elite Gotch, medium top six Vikingstad, low elite Ferraro. And then I think we got one more low elite in there. Maybe didn't, I don't know. <laughs> Orpic or Headman, one of those guys. Yeah, Orpic, wait. I think or I don't, I forget. I thought there was one more low elite. Pretty sure. Anyway, I forgot. <laughs> but a pretty good draft overall. Still got another medium elite there. All right. We got some scouts here. Need to be re-signed. A minus. That's someone you don't really give up. Goodness. Okay, another WHL. That will I'll keep because he's my secondary. Yeah, we'll keep both of our dub scouts. That's a good, you know, A minus and a B is good enough. NHL Atlantic. We can find a better NHL. Uh, Macaulay. That's a Q. He's rated B. I want to hold on to that because he's young. Packard, U.S. West, B minus. I mean, that's good enough for U.S. West, to be honest. I can always fire some other guys. Liga. I'll hold on to that for now because I don't know if I'll be able to. If I find an improvement, I'll get. I'll get him. Yeah, for the most part, we're holding on to these guys. I'll take a look. If I, I'll fire some guys if I need to. But our scouting pool isn't too bad. Besides the U.S.A. East and. You know, we don't have a high, high scout for, like, the Q or the O. They're both kind of both at Bs. We're hoping to find one of those. But I just didn't want to get rid of that one just in case. I guess I could have. It's not a big deal, but whatever. Like, if I'll fire the other one if I need to. <laughs> Alrighty. So there we go for scouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to be good on coaches here. To the resign phase we go. Shattenkirk. Freaking out a good year. And we can hold on to him. Because even if... Even if Tessier breaks into the NHL this year, he's still only top six. So I really think I should hold on to Shattenkirk. Maybe just for a year. Yeah, him and Barry both grew. How much is he going to want? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he wants some cash. I'm just going to do a year. I can afford him for a year. So I'm going to just do a year. Let's hold on to him, though. So we got some stat growth. 7.62 something. So it's an okay price. We have to get into that for a year. Kulikov, Dahlstrom. I think we can probably get rid of Kulikov at this point, maybe. Veselainen, he didn't want a great extension throughout. There we go. That, see, that's what I'm looking for out of Veselainen. Now, the question is, is he long-term dude here? I don't know. He still looks like a trade bait kind of guy. Or Kyle Connor is trade. I don't know. They're, they're, it's hard to say which one's going to be better. Which one do I want more? But uh, I'm pretty sure let's capitalize on that sort of type contract because that's really freaking good. And that's it'll be tradable no matter what. 5.3 for eight years for this guy who could actually get even better than this. It's a team-friendly deal. We're taking it immediately. Capitalizing on him playing third line most of the time. Good stuff. Appleton. Both of these guys want back. I might let go of one of them. Probably will be Appleton if I do. 
Cop is sort of better. And we will have some new guys breaking in. Wong, 79. Yeah, we got some guys coming up, man. Yep. Uh, we might get rid of both Cop and the other dude. There's 12 right there. We have Gotch. Oh, you can play on that fourth line probably. Let's sign him anyway. Shore, Bork. These are depth sort of guys. I'll hold on to Shore for that reason. I might keep one of those guys. one of them for depth probably Appleton or cop probably cop for depth he's got better face-offs he could play anywhere a bit better than Appleton can so we're gonna let Appleton go and we're gonna sign cop just for a year well I don't know I could probably get him from I don't know I'm just guessing on that I'm not trying to do math <laughs> Griffith, we were holding on for AHL type stuff. Let's see if we have any entry levels, which we should. No? Okay, never mind. Not as many as I thought there would be. All right. Barry, Shattenkirk, Morrissey, and Niku. There's your top four. Niku actually got not too bad, man. <laughs> he, he developed more than I thought he would. Really, he really did. Yeah. God, I hate that contract, Morrissey. He's likely going to have to be someone who moves out. If we get that true top two lefty. Anyway. But there's uh, five guys. Tessier should be ready. Lee's might be ready. He needs his entry level. So we'll hold on to hold on to Hanola, obviously. Dahlstrom for depth or to be that top six. Kulikov. I might have to let him go. Because there's six or for a depth guy. I'm thinking either Tessier or Lee's one of these guys has got to jump and be NHL ready, right? One of these guys has got to jump. I'm thinking it'll be Tessier. At least I hope it will be. He's at 77 now. He should get another jump because he's jumped every single offseason. He should be ready. It's safe to keep Kulikov still. And I might do that just because we can always play him in the AHL. He's more expensive, but when we bury it, it won't matter. Yeah, I still think I'll hold on to it just to be safe. Just maybe Tessier will need a year in the AHL. Depends on the jumps. Potato Pullman. What are we looking at for HL? Probably least. I don't think he'll jump enough. Even if he does, we have better options, mostly in Hynola. I think he should jump again. So Lease will likely be AHL no matter what. So one, two, three, four, five. Yikes, Sullivan, man. Is the Rev a bust? Jesus. It's not growing for shit. Anyway, that was, what, six? Or five? I don't know. Keep one or both of them. I needed some depths. You know what? Let's keep both of them. Plus, least for some reason, might not be eligible for HL or some weird thing. Don't need this guy. So that should be good. Oh, wait. No, I got Lambos signed. My bad. Anyway, I needed both of those guys. Yeah, I counted Lambos and I shouldn't have. Whatever. Because he's an ex exemption? Or wait. I don't know. I forget. All right. We're going to keep Bird in here, even though he's not really anything special. We'll keep him for a year. Dansk might as well. You can maybe find someone better. Oh, my goodness. Our HL team was trash. Yeah, time to move on from Oscar Dansk here. Wow, yeah. Let's let's do that. Let's find someone better. <laughs> Yikes. Maybe it's our team as a whole, but holy crap. Not too good. 
All right, let's advance the day here. Clean some of this stuff up. All right, scout. Scout. Scout, I think we had like four or something. Cool look out. Oh, I, I missed the first one. He should have renewed, though. Everyone renewing right now. Okay, Dawson rejected. That's not a big one. Cop, not necessarily a big one. Shattenkirk's a big one. Vessel Lion. Fuck you guys! Accept my team friendly offers. You bitches. Alright, let's go to the one by seven or something. Alright, what was it at? It was, it was. Oh, fuck, I forget. <laughs> oh, let, me, let me see what that price that he wanted was. It had to have been over seven. Maybe one by eight or something. Yeah, I'm going to go to eight. eight. One by eight, because it's only one year. One by eight for Shattenkirk. He earned it, I guess. Vessel line, I'm a little bummed about that. Uh, I can still get him to a very, very good deal. It just won't be as team friendly. We'll bump him up in small increments. So it's 5.3. Let's try 5.5. Then I'll go 5.75. We'll take him up slowly. I can always tender him. Let's try that. Let's get the other guys signed, though. Cop, yeah, we'll pay him. It's only going to be depth. Still a decent-ish price. Dahlstrom is only going to be depth. I probably lowered him too much. See if he'll accept that. Griffith, sure. AHL, we need some more guys for that. Two-way. Shaw. Yeah, we don't really have any other entries. Yeah, so I'm pretty much going to hold on to all those guys. Because I kind of need to. Two years for you, yeah, that's fine. Because you actually have some growth. Same with this guy if he wants it. He does. Perfect. And Shaw is well to hold on to. Yep, there we are. That should be good. Should be everyone, I'm pretty sure. So let's advance again. See if we can snag everyone. We got another scout and another scout. And that should be it. <sighs> Dahlstrom's still rejected. That's interesting. We got Cop. Shattenkirk's still rejected. We got Shaw. We got Griffith. We got McKenzie. Vesselin is still rejected. They want more money. Fucking bitches. One by eight. I can still afford both of them. So I'll go for both of them. Niku's gonna need an extension, so ooh man, we're gonna be well once Shattenkirk gets out, yeah. We'll have a bit of a reset, but this is this is a really good chance for us to push. I could keep him on five and, and just try to keep him happy with the years and get him for way cheaper. But man, if I can just it's gonna be a good price regardless. Even the even the six, like the six mil is like a good freaking price. So we just did 5.5. .5. We'll do 5.75. Let's try that. Shattenkirk. We did 1 by 8. He didn't like that. I'm still holding on to him. He's still going to be worth it. It's because I'm changing his years. He doesn't like that. But I'm not I'm not doing him extra years, man. Not, not when you're built on stat growth and you're going to be aging as well. <laughs> And we could have a replacement for you very soon. So you're you're just there to buy time. Was that it? Is that all I had? Let's hope. Oh yeah, Dahlstrom. Mr. Depth. I'll give you exactly what he wants. If he doesn't accept that, that's a bit odd. Because he's asking for it, right? He's still rejected. What a fucking idiot. God, it's Shankirk! What the hell? I don't like the game when it does this. Doesn't give me my discounts. How dare you. Shattenkirk, man. Are you serious right now? Not going past that, Dahlstrom. So if you don't take that, you're gone. Just FYI. I could just give him f five, you know, five years, but I really wanted to capitalize on that. Couldn't like I could drive five by five and see what he says to that. And that's we're saving more money that way. But we're not getting that long term. I guess I'll try that. Something like this. Let's try a five by five, see if he accepts that. The years, maybe it's the years he doesn't want to commit that long. I highly doubt it though. Okay, we got Dahlstrom. Shattenkirk still rejected. Really, dude? 
and Vaseline. What the fuck is wrong with these assholes? You're not giving me my discounts. All right, we're one day away, so we're getting close on it. We can afford anything for these two guys. We don't really need anything in free agency, so we're fine in that regard. We've got our goalies all signed. We're, we need an HL goalie. That's it. That's easy to do. All right, I'm going to qualify us a line because we're not losing him for free. All right, Shattenkirk. If you don't take a one by nine deal, you're you're done. That's way more than he's worth. He's probably gonna have an off year. <laughs> oh, that's a lining. Did I already try five seven five with him? Trying it again, regardless. Okay, we got Shattenkirk. Vesselin is still rejecting. Yikes, man. I'm going to have to give him six. It's not... I mean, it's still team friendly, but it's... <sighs> He's really good. He's really, really good. It's, I mean, but he's not that much better than Kyle Connor. That's the thing. And I was trying to get him to a way, way better contract so we can... I mean, it still will be a better contract regardless. Let's try six. Six on the dot. Eight by six. It's still team friendly. If he grows. Which he should. We'll try that. If that doesn't work, I, I don't know. I might trade him then. Because we're getting to the point where it's like you're... We need the team-friendly deals, and you're not exactly worth that much more, dude. Like at all. We're paying like we're you know we're paying some of these UFAs some good amount of money to because well we need them to help turn our season around. So we need some team-friendly deals from our homegrown talent. Shifley's gonna need a freaking a, a pay raise in a couple years. Luckily, we'll have Shattenkirk off the books by then. I mean, we're, we'll be fine, but I just. Now I'm I'm actually really liking that hurdle extension because it's very team friendly for what he brings to the table in my opinion. Let's see. Up, I'm aware he's tendered. Now he accepts. So six mil a year for eight years. It's still team friendly. It's still good. It's still better than Cal Connor cap wise. We might have to make that decision giving away Connor just for the cap situation to save you know 1.7 mil, which is. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds up. So that might be a thing we have to deal with. Uh, yes, thanks. Anyway, we're in free agency now. We can extend. We can see what Niku wants extension-wise. Get an idea of that. Ugh, yeah. I mean, it's better, better than uh Morrissey. But yeah, he's a true top, true top four type guy. And Morrissey's probably making more than he needs to at that price. At an 85. Only a one overall difference between him and Niku. And Niku still could grow to that. We can get him on a better deal. And he's actually better defensively as Niku. Slightly. Not a huge amount. Got better awareness. No, he doesn't. Never mind. And Niku really likes that uh, t top top four. It's really good chemistry on that end. Morrissey. Oof. Damn. This is such a tough... That's a tough call. Because Morrissey's actually even better. Ugh. It's just that cap price. Yeah, we're going to have to make tough decisions based on cap coming up soon. It's the position we're in. You know? It's, it's just how it goes. And Hellebuck is coming off contract soon, too. And you know he's going to want to raise. So, uh, we have a window now. <laughs> We've got 2.7 mil to work with. That's enough for a rental come the deadline, but not much more besides that. Yeah, it is going to be, we got the task ahead of us. Definitely quite a task. All right, well. It's going to be tough. We'll check free agency, although we're probably not going to be able to pursue much. So, I mean, we need a HL backup. I'll just give you guys a look at it. 
Let's turn off the draft settings. Fog of War back on. There we are. And check out the free agency class for this year. Kapanen, Forsberg, Malkin, pretty strong free agency. Oh, Ristolainen, not too bad. Pretty pretty strong free agency class. A lot of good serviceable players. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, Kapanen's tendered. Uh, Forsberg's already got a team interested in him. Malkin doesn't. So yeah, hindsight, you go for Getzloff, then you can sign Malkin. But cap wise, it wouldn't have really worked. You know, because Hurdle's making a really easy amount of money. And I'm, I'm still I'm not convinced Byfield's ready for second line time this year anyway. So by the time Byfield needs his actual money, we can have maybe get, gotten rid of Hurdle. And, you know, and Byfield will take a team, hopefully a team-friendly long-term deal. That's kind of the goal here. But, yeah, there's your free agency class. Lindholm is actually a fair price for what his overall is. That's why probably so many teams are interested in him. That price does get, will go up. It'll be around you know six mil or so. Um, as for who we're gonna pick up for the AHL, I mean, I could you can kind of grab almost anyone. Koskinen, <laughs> stat growth Koskinen. Good luck, bud. Stat growth Dell too. We have to. Well, I mean, we can get some. I'd rather get someone on a two way. What the hell? Hey, we can get Lunk. Maybe we can get Lunkfist for our AHL. <laughs> Get the king. And maybe we I can maybe I can get him for like a mil and then bury it. It won't be too bad. And uh yeah, there's actually not too many good options around there. Oh well actually, Reimer. 82. That price. That's actually better. Or condom here. He's only really gonna go down like 80 overall. Those are actually both good deals. Are they two way? No. But still, if you bury him, that's like no money anyway. Lindgren, that might be a two-way. Lindgren, I mean, there's Char you know, Charlie Lindgren, also a really good option. 79 overall, he wants a two-way. And you know, if it's a two-way, I can actually call that guy up, correct? And I, he won't get claimed if it's two-way? That's actually good, in case we have an injury. Ah, Lindgren's not too bad, actually. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning more towards him than getting Hank or something. Yeah. That way, we don't have to call up Burden every two seconds if we get an injury. Like we suffered with Hellebuck last year. A little gun shy because of that. Charlie Lindgren looks like the good option there in free agency. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you thought about the draft. You know, my ideas moving forward about moving Byfield along slowly, seeing how he'll do. I don't think he's ready for second line. He didn't produce good enough. I don't know if he'll grow well enough. We'll see. We'll see what he does. We'll definitely keep him on the power play and such and, you know, try to bring him along. But, uh... You know, Wong's coming up now, too. Ready for that, you know, probably fourth line or maybe wing on the third. We have a lot of good talent. So, we'll see what we can do here. All right, that'll do it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to leave that like, and I'll see you in the next one.